Hey guys, Winky here. Hope you all doing good. Welcome back to another episode of How to Hack Ethical series. Today I am going to explain about pre-hijacking attacks of user accounts. Online accounts getting hijacked and misused is an everyday occurrence. But did you know that account pre-hijacking attacks are also possible? Inspired by previous research on preemptive account hijacking by way of single sign-on SSO technology, Researchers found that not only there are several ways an account pre-hijacking attack can be mounted, but also that out of 75 popular websites and online services they tested, at least 35 of these were vulnerable to one or more variant. Among these were Instagram, LinkedIn, Dropbox, Zoom, and WordPress.com. What makes account pre-hijacking attacks possible? Exploitable security gaps arise partly because many services support at least two different routes for account creation. Route 1, the classic, user choosing username and password. Route 2, the federated root, SSO wire and identity provider, example, sign in with Microsoft or Google or LinkedIn. Fundamentally, the root cause of account free hijacking vulnerabilities is that the service fails to verify that the user actually owns the supplied identifier, e.g. email address or phone number, before allowing use of the account. Types of pre-hijacking attacks The researcher identified five types of pre-hijacking attacks. 1. Classic federated merge attack Using the victim's email address, the attacker creates an account via the classic root username and password method. Then they let the victim to create an account via the federated root using SSO via an identity provider with the same email address. After that the service merges these two accounts insecurely, and the attacker still has access to the account. 2. Unexpired Session Identifier Attack Using the victim's email address, the attacker creates an account via the classic root and maintains a long-running active session. Then the victim recovers the account using the same email address. After that the attacker retains access to the account if the password reset did not invalidate the attacker's session. 3. Trojan Identifier Attack Using the victim's email address, the attacker creates an account via the classic root. Then the attacker adds a Trojan identifier, example the attacker's federated identity or another attacker-controlled email address or phone number to the account. Later, when the victim resets the password, the attacker can use this Trojan identifier to regain access the account, example by resetting the password. 4. Unexpired Email Change Attack The attacker creates an account using the victim's email address and begins the process of changing the account's email address to the attacker's own email address. Then the service sends a verification URL to the attacker's email address, but the attacker confirms the change only after the victim has recovered the account and started using it. 5. Non-verifying IDP attack The attacker leverages an IDP that does not verify ownership of an email address when creating a federated identity. Then the attacker creates an account with the target service and waits for the victim to create an account using the classic route. If the service incorrectly merges the two accounts based on the email address, the attacker can access the victim's account. How is account pre-hijacking possible? For all these attacks, the attacker would have to know or discover the email address of the target. It is relatively easy feat in this digital age, and identify services at which the victim doesn't have an account. The attacker might observe a general increase in popularity of a service like a video conferencing service. When people are required to work from home and pre-hijack accounts for that service using email addresses found through website scraping or credential dumps. Or, as another example, an attacker might target a social media influencer with a strong presence on one platform and pre-hijack their account on another social media platform that's rapidly becoming the next big thing. Which platforms are vulnerable? Researchers tested 75 different platforms out of the top 150 according to Alexa. They found that 35 of these platforms were potentially vulnerable. This includes big names such as LinkedIn, Instagram, WordPress, and Dropbox. How to protect against account pre-hijacking? If you set up an account and are told that an account already exists, you should sign up with a different email address. This attack is impossible if you use different email addresses for all of your most important accounts. This attack also relies on the user not using two-factor authentication, 2FA. 
If you set up an account and turn on 2FA, anyone else with access to the account won't be able to log in. That's all for today guys. Hope this video helps. We publish video every week. To stay up to date and aware of such cyber risks, and learn about more hacking tools, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the subscribe and bell button on the top right corner of the page. Thanks for watching. See soon.